A letter has arrived, huh? Dialogue still automatic. I have no control. What kind of a letter is this? It's Kara. Okay. Looks like we were saved. That, that's not a very strange line. <laughs> but okay, sure. If you say so. God, I love the soundtrack for this game. So much fun. Feels like the battle was all a dream. I don't think it was a dream. And if your ending to this game is, ha ha, none of it mattered, it was all a dream, then yeah, no. Oh, look at that, the Mughals. Traveled around to various towns. Things have started to return to how they were before. Everyone is peaceful. Well, that's nice. And we got the awesome Moogles back. And uh, I'm sure Ferris is really happy to be sitting in that chair. She never addressed ever wanting to. Looks like the Chancellor's doing all the work while they just sit there. Which is exactly what I told them they should be doing all along, but... Eh. So Ferris seems worried about the pirates. Well then... There you go. Get back in your gear. Out the window. And, uh, go check on them. See how they're doing. No one to succeed the throne. It's what happens when the princess isn't there. I guess she is technically a princess, right? Even though the king was her grandfather. I would guess that make her princess until now, so she should technically be queen, I guess. I think so. I don't know how that stuff works. Martz is in his hometown again. Till he leaves on a journey again, he'll be with his mother and father. Well, isn't that sweet? Finally gets to settle down after a very long journey. Oh! Apparently that's how birth is given in the Final Fantasy universe. They had children. You should come meet them. Oh, they just jump out already fully formed. Yeah. Okay. No, uh, no maturation period or anything like that. They just go into, you know, a few month old babies. It's been a year since then. Len and Ferris are busy with everything at the castle. Bart's is left on another journey. I think I'll go to the place where Grandpa sleeps. To that place. Now, they do I think they mentioned where uh, that happened. The others come asking uh, you guys about me? Nah, I'm sure they are. Please tell me that I wanted to see them again. It's interesting when they do this in games where they, uh, they decide, it's like, okay, the game ends or the story ends and then everyone splits apart, you know? We've been watching these characters all together for, you know, what must be weeks or months of their lives and then you know they form this great bond together and then all of a sudden you know the game ends the danger ends everyone goes back to doing their own thing but they all split apart and then you just you see this that they haven't talked to each other in years and it's just, it seems so odd to me that you can develop such great uh kind of character interactions and friendships between people and then it can so easily you know once the uh, danger is passed it's so easy for them to just move past that and everyone goes their separate ways. Seems kind of odd to me, but they do it in a lot of games and anime and movies and stuff like that. And Crazy Lana is still getting herself poisoned. Oh well. Let's kind of show some of the memories over the course of this game. Lost poor Sildra, but Sildra became one hell of an ally. One of the most useful summons in the entire game.
Paris is awesome. I'd have to say if I have to pick a character, you know, one of the five characters we have that playable ones, I'd probably go for Golov because I think he's the, the funniest character. But Ferris is a close second. Uh, he's more interesting than some of the other characters. And... Though Kara was fun too. They're all kind of fun. Bart's in his uh, being afraid of heights and Kara for just coming in randomly and slaughtering people. Kicking Bart's ass. Lena doing crazy stuff all the time. It's an interesting theme to play over the ending of the game because it's not typically, you know, what you would associate, like from the songs that we've heard throughout the game, it's not one you would really associate with the end of the game. Now, if you remember, this is where the Elder Tree was. And this, eventually, when they get around to it, they don't, yeah. But at that moment, Grandpa had not saved me. Yeah, the, uh... Really uh, did a number on x at that time. But I'm still a bit sad. I don't blame you. I guess they buried Gullif here, though, next to the, uh, or underneath the Elder Tree. Though they never really mentioned it. I guess technically, since he did die in the tree, that would make the most sense. Yeah, they just never showed any scene of... You know, him being buried or anything like that. Yeah, Gullif definitely would be my favorite character. He's uh, he's the most fun. Best dose of comedy, I think, was out of him throughout the game. Now, this is an ending theme. Classic Final Fantasy. Poor Gollif. I love getting a chance to listen to some of these older soundtracks, you know, the, the style of music we see in games, even like JRPGs nowadays is a lot different than, uh, you know, we get now. If you look at something like Final Fantasy 13 or something like that, you know, everything's a lot more orchestrated and I love orchestra as much as anybody else, but uh, having, you know, these older, you know, 8-bit, 16-bit, whatever, you know, sound files, it's just something nostalgic about it and something, you know, classic retro about it. You know, this is video game music. You know, there's lots of really good music from games throughout the years to stuff released this year to stuff released, you know, 30 years ago. But uh, with the direction that the games are going, I kind of miss having, uh, you know, having this style of music. But anyway, at this point, if you were missing any of the characters, you would have missed seeing what they were up to, and they would have fallen down from the heavens and have been brought back to life by some kind of magical power, something, whatever. But anyway, yeah, they would show up right around here, just as those uh, flowers, I think, were showing up. And yeah, what do we hear now? Grandpa's voice, huh? rustling of the trees. Wait a minute. The murmur of water. The power of the crystals. It's reviving. I don't think you hear the flare. Well, yeah, I guess you could hear the crackle of fire, but the whisper of the earth. I would think that rumble would be a better choice of words, but to each his own. I have no idea what you're talking about, Bartz. I never do. But it's nice. Everything seems to be coming back to life, and we've got one hell of a happy ending. Oh, 
let's go into the new slash old world. Since, you know, it was originally a merged world to begin with, and now we get to re-explore it now that it's all healed up. Oh, look at that, chocobos! Hey, look, it's the kids. They grow up fast. And Kara's got, I hear you. Anyway, I really like this part of the ending. Um, it's just the credits, but the way they did the animation on the, uh, the background, awesome. Speaking of which, the graphics. It's very much like Final Fantasy IV, but they did some new things with the uh, animation, such as this background. Uh, they also did a really good job, you know, kind of implementing a little more Mode 7 in here. So, graphics are fine. They're SNES Final Fantasy graphics. We know what to expect from them. Uh, I actually like these more than the ones from Final Fantasy VI, because Final Fantasy VI, the map looks a lot like this all the time, and the characters just look too big. It just seems unnatural, and I think it's too jarring in that game. But here, I think everything balances out quite nicely. The characters. There are no characters. There are very, There's very few uh, characteristics that most of them have, and what little they do have is kind of on the basic side, you know, Gullif is the crazy old man, and he's kind of funny, and Lena, you know, loves animals, loves the hear yous and all that kind of stuff, and just overall is always, you know, righteous and goodness and nice, and Bart's is as bland as possible, so you can put yourself in his uh, position. Uh, Kara is somewhat interesting. I think there would be a lot more uh, to get into if, say, I had done an LP of the advanced version or the Steam version of the game, where they might have added a little bit of extra. I like that animation on Kara's uh, flowing hair there. Awesome. Um, let's see, what else? Music. Music for this thing is awesome. The music is just so good because like the, the soundtrack balances really well. I've always said that Final Fantasy IX is kind of the best overall game in the entire series because everything is so well done. You know, they may not have that one outstanding thing, but they don't have this other thing that's kind of only middle of the road. Everything is kind of, you know, on that high level without being outstanding and without being just okay. Just everything is great. Um, and I think the soundtrack in Final Fantasy V pretty much echoes that, you know. There's so many good songs in this game. Um, none of them, you know, like, other than, say, maybe the Battle against Gilgamesh, the Battle in the Big Bridge, that one kind of stands out a little bit. But other than that, most of the soundtrack doesn't stand out. Every song is just really, really good. Uh, the story. The story is fine. I actually like the story quite a bit in this game. Uh, I find it does a relatively good job of, you know, pacing its way throughout the game. Uh, you know, each of the characters, we get our introduction to them, and then we find a town, and the town usually, if we talk to the NPCs, will give us some background on what's going on. You know, having NPCs that are actually useful, that's really nice. I like being able to talk to the NPCs and learn about the world, get some background lore on everything. So that's awesome. I like being able to do that. Um, just overall, the, the story, you know, you know, the... We, we don't do a rebellion this time. If you look at it, you know, what Final Fantasy 1... Was there a rebellion in 1? I don't remember. I don't remember the story for that game very well at all. But Final Fantasy 2 is a rebellion. Final Fantasy 4 was a rebellion. You know, this is the fifth game in the series. We'd already have at least two solid games that were about rebellion. Um, so it's nice that we kind of moved away from that and our classic sword and sorcery style of game you know no no real steampunk aspects i like the traditional fantasy kind of layout that, that they had so i really like the story for this game uh let's see the battle system that's something good to mention since they're basically going to tell us about it now they just kind of show our our jobs and all the stuff that we've been able to do in our stats here but uh, yeah, the battle system, the battle system for me is hit and miss. I really like the creativity and the variety that we get because there's so many different options uh, from the strategy on bosses 
to the ability to use so many different job classes. Do I have to press a button here? Do I have to press a button or are you just gonna move on? Are you frozen there? Okay, I'm just gonna keep talking. Um, <laughs> yeah, the uh, the battle system, I, I like different abilities, you know, like in the end, you get to the end, you're basically, everyone's using some of the same abilities because there's just the really, really good ones. But having the creativity of, you know, the blue mage and, you know, being able to put some strategies forward with combine ability and being able to combine different job classes like uh, having a speedy hunter with slash and uh, running shoes or being able to have uh, the dancer in combination with uh, some of these other abilities, you know, or, you know, a thief with build up. You know, so many different job combinations are really interesting. Dimension and combine is really good together. Uh, it just, it gives, it leads to so much creativity in how you do up your party. And that's one of the aspects about it I really, really like. On the downside, you need a frickin' strategy guide to know who to use what on, where to get blue magic spells and how to use them and which combinations to use with combine and it's a nightmare but if they had done it a little better so that we had access to like a really useful scan ability with the blue mage or something like that where we could you know learn who's got which spells just by casting scan on them or learn like all of their statistics like strengths and weaknesses and elemental resistance and status resistance and all this other kind of stuff that would be you know a little better but overall i think it kind of washes in between and between the two i would say there's a little more good in it than there is bad in it and i just enjoy the creativity uh, to be honest it's a lot of fun playing around with the different job classes in this game and i'm glad i was able to show off most of them at least a little bit all right, what else we got here? We got story, characters, music, graphics, battle system. Uh, I usually do one on gameplay. What can we say about the gameplay? It's pretty straightforward. I wish they had an auto dash feature, which some pretty much all the later versions of this game from the PlayStation version forward had. Um, the translation was kind of weird um, in this version. Uh, it's also kind of weird in the PlayStation version. In fact, I think it's worse in that version. Um, but I think they've uh, corrected a lot of the issues um, in the Game Boy Advance version and the Steam version and the mobile ports and all that kind of good stuff. But it's nice that uh, they give us access to, you know, being able to go to towns and you find items, you know, hidden in things. And they give us access to buying all the spells, save for the blue magic spells, and, uh, you know, different uh, weapons and armor different useful at different times i kind of wish they would have required us to use abilities like pitfalls and uh, damage floors and all those kind of things a little more often that we didn't really need uh to be prepared for those all that often they just randomly throw pitfalls in one dungeon and then never talk about it again but um, other than that, it, it was fine. It wasn't particularly good or particularly bad. Overall, it's as a Final Fantasy game, it's kind of below average. But in the, in the same sense, I enjoy it a hell of a lot. Uh, mainly due to the uh, kind of the nostalgic part and finally being able to do really well in the game years later after having learned about all of these different abilities when my first playthrough was so horribly done and I relied on Berserkers most of the time going through pretty much most of the game up to the final dungeon where it finally stopped working for me. But anyway... That's pretty much all I had to say about Final Fantasy V. It, uh, it was a fun LP, a uh, bunch of changes going on for me during the recording of it, so hopefully uh, it all comes across, uh, comes across all right for you guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. But yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much all for this one. Now, I'm going to leave, I prob by the time this one goes out, I'll probably already have an update video about what's going on with the future. 
I'm going to attempt to still work on my test run for Grandia 3, but uh, we will we'll, we'll see what happens. There's likely to be a gap uh, in uploads beyond this one due to reasons you already know. Stupid graphics card. Anyway, that's all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.